Alabama Splash Adventure is the most well-known amusement and water park in Alabama. This park may be just 25 years old, but it has a convoluted history with multiple owners, rebrandings, and overhauls. Today, this park is rather unbalanced. The park features a complete water park. Then the dry side is mostly comprised of kiddie rides, but it also features the southeast's best wood coaster and rampage. This is an intense coaster that doesn't really fit in with the rest of the lineup. This video will explore how this happened, discuss if it will ever change, and review the park as you can experience it today. This park was the brainchild of Birmingham Mayor Larry Langford. He formed the West Jefferson Amusement and Public Park Authority with 11 other cities and borrowed $60 million to build the park. In 1998, Vision Land opened. The park had four areas, Main Street for shopping and dining, Steel Waters Water Park for water slides, Marvel City for kids, and Celebration City for amusement rides. The park opened with just one major coaster, but it was a large and impressive wood coaster and rampage. The park's troubles began in 2002 when the park filed for bankruptcy. That season, only the Steel Waters Water Park opened. The park was then purchased by Southland Entertainment Group, and the park underwent its first major rebranding. Marvel City kept its name, but the other three areas were renamed. The amusement side became known as Magic Adventure. The water park became known as Splash Beach. And the entry area was called Celebration Street. Southland invested in the park annually, but they sold it to Adrenaline Family Entertainment in 2008. This group added a few attractions and rebranded the park as Alabama Adventure. In the 2010s, General Attractions LLC was formed. This company consisted of the park's original owners. They purchased Alabama Adventure in 2012, but they made a major change. They reopened the property as just a water park named Splash Adventure. This led to them selling off a majority of their amusement rides at parks across the country. Meanwhile, several custom rides like Rampage and the Wild River Gorge River Rapids ride were left to rot. The final ownership change occurred in 2014. Former Holiday World CEO Dan Cook and his sister founded Cook Family Parks, and they purchased Splash Adventure. They immediately tried to undo the damage general attractions caused. They rebranded the park for the final time as Alabama Splash Adventure. They kept the pre-existing water park intact, but they also reintroduced an amusement side. Due to budgetary constraints, they only started with a handful of kiddie rides. Rampage did not reopen initially. After sitting closed for a few years, it needed extensive track work to reopen. The park invested $1 million into their signature coaster and had a grand reopening in 2015. In their decade of ownership, the new owners have split their investments between the amusement and water sides fairly evenly. So why is the park still so unbalanced? It all comes back to what they started with. They were given a water park that for all intents and purposes was complete. It had all the amenities and slides needed to function. Meanwhile, they basically had to rebuild the amusement side from scratch. While there was some infrastructure in place, they were missing the most important thing, rides. They had just a rotting wood coaster. So I think it's admirable they've been able to get back to this point in just a decade. I think this park just needs more time to mature and balance itself out. The park currently charges $40 for admission online. I think this is a fair price if you take advantage of everything this park has to offer. That rate is about in line with what a lot of other standalone water parks would charge. Then on top of that, you also have the dry rides, free parking, and also free soft drinks, much like Holiday World. You also have free sunscreen, but these stations are pretty tough to find throughout the park. I could see those visiting just for the amusement rides finding the price point a bit steep, especially if you're a thrill seeker. But I can basically guarantee you'll be able to marathon rampage any day of the year. I have only visited this park on weekends, one of which was the Saturday of Labor Day weekend. Every single dry ride was a walk-on. At worst, I had to wait an extra train for rampage if I wanted the very front or back car, and that mirrors the experience of others. Why is that the case? There are two reasons, visibility and perception. Alabama Adventure is a great location. It is just 15 miles southwest of Birmingham, next to a major highway no less. So the adjacent roadway gets heavy traffic. However, 
there is a minor design defect with how the park was originally set up. Nothing gets above the tree line. Alabama Adventure is built on a hill. You enter at the lowest point. The roller coasters are on a hill in the back of the park, but there are also a ton of trees. Then the highest point is used for maintenance and storage. Just to put this issue in perspective, I have a friend who lived in Birmingham. They drove past this park every single day on the way to work, but they had no clue it even existed. They simply could not see it. If the park could place an eye-catching rod atop the hill like a drop tower or ferris wheel, that would have two advantages. First, guests in the park could get an amazing view from the ride, and second, those driving by would realize there's an amusement park there. The visibility issue continues to those actually in the park. When you arrive at Alabama Adventure, you see an exciting skyline of water slides adjacent to the parking lot, but you cannot see any amusement rides. Then when you enter the park, you walk down a main street lined with shops. However, you again cannot see any of the amusement rides. The only indication you have for the drive side is an archway at the end of the street to the left that says rides. But most people instinctively head right under the archway that says slides, especially because you can actually see the water slides. Then from much of the water park, you can't really see any rides. The only ride you can possibly see is Rampage, but that is quite a ways back and that can blend in with the trees if you aren't specifically looking for it. That is also tied to the other issue, perception. Many locals who know of this park think it's still just a water park. The closure by general attraction still resonates more than a decade later. Most people spend a majority of their visit on the water side, so expect to see some crowds there, especially if you go on a weekend. Therefore, the most efficient way to tour this park is to arrive at opening and make a quick lap of the water slides. Every single slide was a walk-on during the first hour of operation. When they started to get busy, I switched to the less busy dry side. This also will give Rampage some time to warm up. While on the topic of appearances, this park looks quite good despite its tumultuous history. This park has never had any theming. This is very clearly an amusement park, not a theme park. The park is clean though, and the newer slides have a vibrant paint scheme. Then the amusement side looks good too. I like the use of trees. Then I love how imposing the two largest coasters are as you approach them. Because of how both are placed in that aforementioned hill, they look monstrous. The only thing from an aesthetic standpoint that needs work on the amusement side is filling the empty spaces. I know the park is working on that at least. The most egregious one that needs to be addressed is that long windy pathway up to Cheddar Chase. There is nothing to see in that walk, and it's sort of awkward with the wild mouse being the only ride at the end of the path. You really need something else up there. Helping the park's overall atmosphere is the demeanor of the employees. Holiday World is famous for their friendly employees, and that culture seems to have translated to Alabama Splash Adventure. As a whole, employees are outgoing and social. Now, let's move on to the ride lineup. I will start off with the dry side. As I mentioned at the start, it is definitely still unfinished and a work in progress. The lineup of kitty rides is quite good though. There's plenty to keep the younger ones busy for a few hours. You have several little roundabouts, a small train ride, a junior drop tower, and a kitty coaster named Centispeed. The latter is a wacky worm that came from Jillian's Wonderland Pier in New Jersey. And if you're an adult wanting the coaster credit, yes, you can ride this without a kid. The family ride lineup has seen the biggest investment in recent years. In 2018, the park added the country fair area with three classic spinning rides. In 2019, the park added a Zamperla swinging ship. These rides are solid but not spectacular. Then in 2022, the park got a true family coaster with Cheddar Chase. This is an LNT Systems Wild Mouse relocated from the nearby Lake Winnie Amusement Park. Back there, the coaster ran as Wild Lightning. At its old home, the ride ran untrimmed and had extremely intense laterals in the second half. Borderline painful. Alabama Adventure wisely uses brakes to slow the ride down. As I said in my review, this is a negative for hardcore thrill seekers, but it makes the ride much more approachable and comfortable for all ages. You'll still get moderate laterals, but they are weaker than other mice now. Moving on to the thrill rides, you only have one. This is the area the park needs the most reinforcements. 
a large tower ride plus something with inversions would really help this park out. Thankfully, the one thrill ride they have is fantastic, and that is none other than Rampage, the park's CCI wood coaster. As I've said in a separate review, this ride does many things well. It has great pacing, and it's engaging start to finish. Most hills have nice airtime, then the largest drops are particularly sweet in the back car. The first drop gets a lot of attention for its size and intense curve at the bottom, but there are some drops later in the ride that'll sneak up on you because of this ride's terrain use. Then the turns have minimal banking, so they all have intense and sustained laterals. The ride is running fairly smoothly due to all the track work, and there are only one or two valleys to watch out for if you're in a wheel seat. I imagine those will be addressed in future years. Two other gaps on the amusement side are the lack of dark rides and water rides. You actually have an abandoned River Rapids ride in the woods, but I doubt that'll ever run again. The lack of water rides on the amusement side is fine, because you have such a robust water park included with Admission and Splash Adventure. The park is a modest, but smartly constructed slide lineup. You have two major body slides. The largest of the bunch is Freefall. This is a 7 story tall speed slide. It is quite steep too, so you'll get some airtime at the start. The runoff can be a tad uncomfortable in your back, but the overall experience is swift and thrilling. On the same tower, you have another body slide and twister. This one is nice and smooth. It is shockingly slow though, as I nearly stalled out on a few of the turns, but the final drop is enjoyable and much bigger than usual for this type of slide. Then the park has two tube slides. First is Neptune's Plunge. This is a tower with a quartet of slides, half open and half enclosed. None of them are particularly fast, but the covered ones have some nice side to side action on the turns. Second is Upsurge. This is the best slide in the water side. This is a Whitewater West Boomerango. You have a sizable drop with some airtime. Then the wall element offers some weightlessness and a scary visual you'll careen over the edge. There's also a bunny hill towards the end, but we did not have enough weight to go airborne. Now, it is worth knowing this is the one slide that does not allow single riders, so make sure you have a buddy if you want to go on this one. Then the park is Rocket Racer. This is a mat racing slide with a helix and a double down. No air time in this one, but the competitive aspect will get your blood flowing. Kids have plenty of options here as well. Salamander Bay, Coco Island, and Splash Island all have a mix of sprayers and smaller slides available. And the slide lineup should be further reinforced by a new slide in 2024. I saw the pieces for these on my recent visit. I would love to see a family raft slide or a water coaster of some kind, and I'm optimistic the latter could happen given how popular they've been at Holiday World and the current owners of the park. Beyond the slides, you have the large Kahuna Wave Pool and the relaxing Warrior Lazy River. And you uniquely have the Aqua Maze. This is a labyrinth filled with sprayers. I haven't seen an attraction quite like it elsewhere. That rounds out the attractions, but well, what else does this park have? They have two action-packed shows. There's the Aquabatic Stunt Show and the All-American Dive Show. Unfortunately, I couldn't catch either of them on my visit, but I've heard good things. Then you also have food stands scattered about. I didn't get any meals here, so I cannot speak to their quality, but I do want to reinforce how nice the free soft drinks are. You can just walk up and serve yourself. Not only does this quickly quench your thirst, but it also reduces the strain on the regular food lines. So do I recommend Alabama Splash Adventure? Yes I do. It is a must for coaster enthusiasts simply because of Rampage. That is a very good wood coaster. And I don't see too many enthusiasts heading here, but it's quite easy to tack onto a road trip if you're already in Atlanta. The park is just two hours west of Six Flags Over Georgia. I also recommend this park if you're a water park fan in the area. None of the slides are super unique if you've been to a ton of water parks, but all the major genres are covered. It's hard to recommend much on the amusement side beyond Rampage unless you have young kids. There simply is not much for older guests at this time, but as I said, Rampage alone makes this park worth visiting if you're a thrill seeker. But the park is actively working to bolster the side of the park, and I imagine this park will be in much better shape in a decade. And if they keep the same level of focus on cleanliness and friendliness, I think they'll succeed, 
How much time you'll need comes down to tastes. I think most people could make do with just a half day here, but you could spend a full day if you spend a lot of time in the water park rewriting everything. Coaster enthusiasts probably only need two hours maximum if they're ignoring the water park. If you're on a coaster road trip, it is quite easy to pair this park with a nearby Lake Winnie. Start at Lake Winnie in the morning because that's in the eastern time zone. Spend a half day or so there. Then you jump to the central time zone on the way to Alabama Splash Adventure, getting an hour back. You should have a few hours at this park to get plenty of laps and rampage. So those are my thoughts on Alabama Splash Adventure. What are your thoughts about this park? Whether it be the rides or the many ownership changes, let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like and you considered subscribing because it'd be a lot more roller coaster amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.